What's up everyone? My name is Alvaro from littlefishaudio.com. You might have seen a couple of our videos before. In fact, one of our videos that we've done was on the Dangerous D-Box and why we like it so much. We went over a bit of the features it has and some of the capabilities, but today what we'd like to do is talk a little bit about the tips and tricks that you can sort of do with this unit. Of course, it's a monitoring station. Um, however, it's also a summing box. It's also a headphone amplifier with you know, with talkback, so it's a very robust unit. And like I said before, it's very competitive. So let's go through some of the features and some of the uh, neat things that we can do with this unit. Uh, I have a session here that I brought in to look at the summing aspect. We're gonna talk about how to route our signals, um, you know, depending on frequency, transient information. There's really a lot of ways that that can be done, but we'll save that for the end of the video. So let's get started here with the D-Box. So from left to right, um, before, last video I mentioned how the headphone amp, if we were to turn the volume all the way down, all the way to the left for one of the headphone channels, it becomes an isolated talkback mic. Now, why is this important? Why do we care? Um, so let's say you have a, a live room, a big live room, and you have a lot of musicians in there, and either a couple guys don't wanna wear headphones, or you ran out, or whatever. You can put a speaker in the live room and send a signal out directly from this headphone out headphone out to that speaker and serve as a single talkback mic that gets the whole room, right? So if you have a big orchestra section or whatever, you don't have enough headphones, that's fine. You can just hit the talkback button uh, that's here on the front panel of the D-Box and communicate directly to the entire live room via that one speaker. And it's, and it's nothing new, it's something that's been done for years now, you know, though studios will have a PA in the live room for either reference or just hearing tracks or the talkback. So that's the first trick here with the D-Box with the headphone out. We get an isolated talkback mic uh, or a talkback signal once we turn the level all the way down. So with the talkback, we have that level. Not much to talk about here. Um, just be very aware of where it is and, and how loud it's coming out to your artists or your performers because it's, it can get pretty loud. It can definitely get pretty loud. Of course, with the talkback, we have the nice latch function on the button. And what that means is that when we press and let go, it stays on and we can have a, a, a conversation if we like. Or if I just want to say, do it again, I hold it, do it again let it go and it's and it's back going. So that's the importance of the headphone section and the talkback section. Very straightforward, but like I said, you know, if you need that isolated talkback channel, there it is. All right, so going over to the function section where we have that talkback button, we have both the button, we have the mono button and the setup. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about the setup first. Now, the setup is very simple. It allows us to do two things. It allows us to decide whether we would like each input select to be simultaneous. In other words, I can have multiple inputs running at the same time. And the setup also allows us to choose the, um, the signal or the strength of the signal coming in through the analog. Uh, input. In other words, we can have it calibrated or set up to plus four, which of course is uh, professional standards. Or for consumer gear, say you have an iPod coming in there through XLRs, you can set it at minus 10 and it will gauge the gain accordingly. All right, so the setup is activated when we press the two uh, setup buttons together, mono plus alt speaker. Then we can do our changes, right? I press it again and we're back to our normal mode. So once I'm in setup, if I have both of these lit, you can see how these inputs are all lighting up simultaneously. Now the DAW and the CD input are not gonna be used, be able to be used simultaneously because that's based off the converter, right? The D-Box, which is one of the reasons why we love it, has its own converter built in for reference. We'll talk about how to use that in a little later. But I happen to like uh, just one source on it at, the same, at a time. So I'm gonna leave that there and hit the setup and I'm back to one source at a time. Love these buttons on the D-Box, feel great. Okay, mono, what is mono? Mono fold, 
um, is, is typically how it's referred to. So whenever we press mono, what we're getting is strictly the signal that's coming balanced out of both speakers. What does that mean? It means the exact same signal was coming out of both speakers, which, which in turn gives us that effect of it coming down straight the middle, right? Um, whereas other, other signals say you have, I don't know, a flanger, or you have a wide chorus on, on, a, um, on an instrument, if you hit mono, what'll happen is it'll it'll put those two signals together, and whatever doesn't really match is is null, nullified, right? Is nulled, right? And that that goes back to phase coherence. But the way we can use this, and some of the some of the best uses I found for it is when listening to references. I mean, obviously we can use it for our own mixes, but. Put up, put up a, a trial. You know your last reference song. Hit the mono button and and find out how much is coming down the middle, how much is coming out the sides. You know I find, for example, if you add chorus and, and the higher frequencies of certain in instruments, it gives us a much wider, much more in your face uh, sound because of that spread of that stereo image and that stereo spread, right? So let's say we were doing that in the studio in our, in our mix by hitting mono, we can then see, okay, how much am I actually leaving down the middle, right? Because it's not always smart to spread everything 100% left and right. Because say someone's listening, listening back on a mono system, they're not gonna get the exact signal that, that you put in there, right? Because you're mixing it in stereo. So mono is a tool, it's a very useful tool. You do not have to buy a box to get a mono fold function, right? The Universal Audio uh, console has mono fold. <coughs> Excuse me, some DAWs have mono fold within them. So it's not a function that you need to get the D box necessarily, but the fact that they have it in here just goes to show that they've really thought about just as much as, 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 as we could possibly need in a 1U box. So mono, great tool. Got the alt speaker, this is very straightforward. Alt speaker simply refers to the second pair of speakers. So if you notice here, we actually have three pairs. We have our mains, we have our Genelex, and then we have our Yamaha NS10s. So what we might do is have our mains as the main speaker, and then our Genelex and the NS10s on the alt speaker, and then we can put a switch behind it to switch between three pairs. Some people might complain, hey, what's up? I'm not getting three pairs of speakers. I don't think you need necessarily three pairs of speakers all the time, um, but for what it offers, I think that's a, a, a small uh, compromise, right? So moving from left to right, we've talked about using the isolated talkback, talkback uh, volume, very loud, like I said, talkback button, latch versus the hold function. Mono, very useful, regardless of what monitor controller you're using, mono is a very useful tool when mixing, both to decipher our own mixes and other people's mixes. The old speaker, of course, we wanna change between speakers, uh, get different sounds and uh, get, uh, get a reference, of course. Okay, so moving on to the input select. So the input select is what you think it is. It selects the input that you're in fact listening to. Uh, the sum refers to the eight uh, eight channels that can be summed on the D-Box. If we press play, let's see here. If we press play on our session, we can see the lights on the channels lighting up to indicate that there's signal present. If I bring in, whoop, here we go. There we go, so I can select the Genelex here. They're on our Alt. If I select Sum, I get to hear what's being summed through the D-Box. If I hit it again, deactivated, right? So, um, that's that's the gist of, of how that works. Now, if you remember earlier with the setup, we can set up, we can have it so we can monitor two inputs or three inputs at a time simultaneously. So if we wanted to compare mixes, for example, or just see, see, see what the difference is, we can go to setup, put both of these on, set up again, and now I can turn on as much as I'd like. Okay, so we're not comparing anything, so I'm gonna go back to just one input at a time. All right, there we go, we're hearing it. 
Okay, so the sum refers to the eight channel sum within the D-Box. Analog, why do we need a left and right analog in the back of the D-Box? Short answer, for whatever reason you want. What would I do? I'd put a mixer, a small Behringer mixer, Mackie mixer, whatever, I don't care. I'd put a mixer into the analog, I'd plug synths in there, I'd plug my iPod into that little mixer, and I'd send it into the analog. Someone says, hey, I want to audition this, hey, I want to listen to my music. Plug it in that little mixer, turn it up, boom, 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 hit the analog button and you're good to go. Again, you want to compare between mixes, you can go to the sum, right? And then jump to your analog uh, input, which may have whatever it is you need, okay? So if users are looking to expand their D-Box and add it to an LT, for example, um, to a two bus LT, which is a 16 channel summing box, the way that would work is that the sum out of the D-Box would go into the LT expansion in, okay? And then the LT would bring all those, in this case, 24 channels, eight plus 16, into the analog. So you could be able to monitor all 24 channels being summed in the D-Box and continue to use your D-Box as a uh, monitor controller. Okay, so once again, we get to see how not only does the, the unit itself provide a lot, it can also be integrated into other setups. And I'm just saying two bus LT because that's also a dangerous summing box, right? Maybe you want something else, throw the sum of this into uh, the summing box, the 16 channel summing box, and then that out back into your analog and you can monitor. All right, not done yet. So we have our sum for the eight channels here, our analog in which we can plug in just about anything, right? It's, it, the analog is on stereo XLR on the back of the unit. Like I said, you can plug in a mixer, a synth, iPod, um, you know, whatever you need. The, the whole point is to provide a, a utilitarian input here on the D-Box. All right, we're about halfway through. Now we have the DAW and CD. So off the bat, both of these are digital inputs on the back of the unit, which um, lead to the converter, two-channel converter that is within this D-Box. The converter for the D-Box, if I'm not mistaken, goes up to 96K. It reads the sample rate automatically, so you don't have to um, adjust the D-Box converter on its own. The inputs on the back are AES. Okay, so you can have an AES as we have, for example, from our 96 into the DAW input of the D-Box and uh, monitor through there. I like to use the DAW when I say mastering with quotation marks because I'm not a mastering engineer, but when I print tracks and I really want to get a good idea for, for how the frequencies are responding, um, you know, any mud, is it clear enough? I'll bounce my two track and then I'll monitor that through the DAW such that I can hear the cleanest version of that, pos of that possible. And uh, I really like the converters on the D-Box. Um, I think they're very respectable. Um, and they're very, they're very usable. I mean, it's, 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 it's very clean sound and um, very pristine. I was very happy about it. All right, so the CD is like the DAW and that is also a um, digital input, right? The idea behind this was to have maybe an iPod um, dock or something that you plug into the back of the D-Box to get a digital input and then the D-Box will be the one doing the converting excuse me, for the iPod. So we're not using the actual iPod converter. Um, but really, you know, the CD is just a label. You can put just digital two in here and any digital source you'd like, you can put in through there. Um, that is AES. Um, you know, if you're running SPDIF, there's our, there are SPDIF to AES cables and impedance converters if, if needed. So once again, a lot of uses for it, very flexible. Alrighty, so finally towards the right of the D-Box we have the sum output trim. Alright, then we have the signal present LEDs and the pan knobs. So the sum output is has to do with the level. Alright, so here's our mix. Alright. 
So the sum output has to do with how much gain are we adding or subtracting from the, the master uh, sum or the, the two track, the, the two bus, what have you. Uh, say you're running the summed output into a compressor and it's running too hot, you can lower it a little bit, you can bring it up. Or if you're running it back into the converter and it's coming out too hot, you can use this to adjust. Um, I like it all the way up, quite frankly. I think it sounds great like that. And I don't really mess with it much unless I need a quick dim or I need to adjust while printing. Uh, because we, of course, do not want to print too hot into our converter. Something very important. All right, so the sum output trim allows us to do that. Then finally, we have our monitor volume, a nice chunky knob here in the end, and our LED lights up top that indicate that there is a signal present on each of the eight channels. Of course, these two knobs down here allow us to define the panning of channel seven and eight. Why? Well, let's say you don't want uh, uh, or you don't have a stereo vocal track. You just have a mono, as most people tend to do. You can send that to channel eight <clears throat> and send that down, put that down the middle and, <coughs> excuse me, send a bass down channel seven if you like. Whatever mono sources you have, those channels are there at your disposal to, to use like them. So, that is a um, second, uh, second overview of the D-Box and, and some uses that it has. So let's take a look at tips and tricks with mixing. So we'll take a look here at the computer at the session that I have. We won't be able to hear it mixed down because we don't have a sum output going back into our DAW, unfortunately. We could show that at the end where I print the track. But most importantly, I want to take a look at the routing on the DAW because there's a lot of questions about how to bust stuff out, especially when you only have eight channels of analog summing, right? So like I said, there's different schools on it, but let's take a look and see what I've been doing with this session. All right, guys, so here we are in Pro Tools land. Uh, this is just a session I brought in for reference. This is uh, by one of the McGee twins. If you've seen any of my other videos, you've heard some of their work. This is Christian McGee's song, not to be confused with Fur McGee. Uh, let's listen a bit. Again, I'm sorry that we're not getting a direct signal, but let's just take a listen. And then we'll talk a bit about the routing, which again is, is the main focus of, of how to implement the D-Box uh, within your DAW. So we'll listen to a bit of what we got. Don't judge the mix, it's not final. And uh, we'll talk about how it's routed. So... Listen to the message in my soul. The for you was real, Okay, so off the bat, I brought this session from home. Uh, I don't have all the plugins here, at least not currently, that I have at home. So some aren't working, um, which my uh, tribute, which might be the reason for the differences in levels and might not sound mixed. However, once again, that isn't really a big deal. Let's take a look at what we got here. Uh, drums up top. This is tracked out. We have some guitars. Uh, so one of the challenges for this track was that all the drums are in one stem. Okay, which means that they all have to be processed together. Now there's a number of ways to do that, to process two track stems, whether it's a drum bus or whether it's instruments or whether it's the whole track. But we'll save that for another video where we talk about how to mix a two track with the vocals, which is a very common scenario nowadays. So, uh, going back to what we have here, some guitar, some sub bass. Okay, uh, and then we've got the chorus here. So without going too in depth on the processing, I'm gonna talk about the routing. Let's uh, listen to the chorus and then I'll show you how it's all put together. My love is real for you, for you And I can't go a day without you 
I need you near, it's true, it's true. Cause I can't go a day without you. I can't go a day without you. Cool. So just an idea of what's going on in there. Um, so as I mentioned before, there are different schools of thought uh, regarding bussing instruments out. Naturally, if, you know, if we're summing to 24, 36, I'm not going to be too concerned about how I bust them because each instrument's going to have their own space uh, in the analog domain, right? So I'm sure everybody has their own taste and their own ways of doing this, um, but I'll just show you mine off the bat. So within our session, we have our individual tracks, and then we have some buses created here, one for reverb, one for chorus, one for delay, and then the guitars being bussed together, okay? Some of the instruments or some of the tracks are going straight to their output, right? So what I've done is I've created four different uh, stereo outputs here in Pro Tools, and I've labeled them D-Box 1, 2, D-Box 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay? So these are gonna be our outputs uh, from the 96 into the D-Box. Okay, off the bat, one thing that I, I, I like doing on each of the outputs is having a limiter such that I can guarantee that these stereo buses are not gonna be clipping, right? It just gives me a more, more control. It, it allows me to, to mix a bit more confidently knowing that I'm not going into the red. Of course, you don't wanna fool yourself and think you have a great mix when really you're just smashing this limiter. So it's something to keep in mind, but putting a limiter on these outputs can make a big difference. Another thing I like to do on the bus outputs whenever I'm busing for analog summing is to make sure I do any sort of saturation or coloration uh, in the form of tape machines, in the form of pre's, in the form of analog em emulation. I put that on the bus as well. In this case, I have the Slate VTM because for me, it is a plugin that adds a lot of uh, depth, a lot of dimension and a lot of just uh, reality just brings this ambiance and this, this sense of being inside the room um, to the tracks that uh, I haven't heard from other, other plugins yet, but uh, I'm, still, I'm still searching, so we'll see what else we can find. So again, you know, it's not about putting, you have to put this plug in, you have to put that. These are just concepts to use when you're mixing, right? These are just the things that I like to do. And obviously, of course, between track, it might vary. You know, maybe you don't want any tape emulation on your buses or even uh, a limiter for that matter, right? But this is definitely uh, a good starting point as it will really help you control those signals and, and get you a nice, clean, summed output, okay? So, besides the summing, or now that we have these, uh, this routing set up, we have our four different stereo buses, what we wanna do is define what we wanna send to each one, okay? Now, there are different ways to do that. You can do by f harmonic content or frequency content. In other words, the lows with the lows, the highs with the highs. You can do it by transient content, okay? So instruments with sharp transients, percussion, snare, hi-hat, maybe you wanna bust those together and treat them all uh, all at once. So it really does depend on what you're doing. In this case, let's see what I did here. If I recall correctly, I've got the drums down one and two, the vocals down three and four, bass out seven and eight, and I have bass stereo because I'm doing some uh, stereo imaging processing on the high frequencies, right? So I'll just sum that all. And by doing that, that gives you both that mono girth and that mono substance while also making the bass recognizable in the high frequencies, making it so that it cuts through, okay? So um, that's why the bass is coming out stereo. So let's take a listen real quick and we'll take a look at what's coming out where. Let's see here. Whoops. And I can't go a day without you. I need you near, it's true. So by just soloing the drums, I'm seeing that D box one and two is the only place where signals headed. Uh, let's see what else we have coming out one and two. Uh -huh. Uh 
Looks like just the drums. Let's see where we got the bass coming out. Sub bass. Right, so just seven and eight. Put them together. And it works quite well. So one of the reasons why I personally like analog summing is because it gives a sense of space um, to each bus. Not to say you can't achieve this in the box, but maybe I just haven't reached that level yet. Maybe I still need the crutch of a summing box. But regardless, I like the way it sounds. It gives everything its own room. Let's check out the guitars, how those are coming out. So we will solo those, solo our guitar bus. So here are just the guitars, which as you can see within Pro Tools is coming out just bus five and six. So one of the great thing about busing, and this applies regardless, regardless as to whether or not you're summing in the analog domain or in the box, is that when you bus, you can treat everything together. So let's say I have my guitar there and the guitar as a whole, I don't think it's the case right now, I think it sounds fine, but let's say it's just me missing a bit of air, a bit of brightness, or it's too muddy, right? Then I can just go straight to the bus, right? And add whatever plugin I need to do, I need to use, right? We can put in, let's see the solid EQ. Add some high frequencies. Nice. So busing is another great way to treat signals. Um, of course, you don't have to have an analog uh, summing box to do that, but it's definitely a great technique. Okay, so once we have everything set, and uh, we need to remember that when we're routing and we're busing stuff together, it's really important that we get rid of all the low end hum, all that low end rumble, you know, because that will all add up. So you still have to treat your, your instruments individually, but um, busing can be very powerful. So we have everything routed and now we're ready to print our track using the eight channel um, summing that's available here on the D-Box. So how do we go about doing that? So first of all, we're gonna wanna make sure that nothing is soloed, right? All the channels that we need are active. So I'm gonna come here into Pro Tools. Let's see, I'll just go from scratch, do a new audio track here. We'll make sure that is stereo. Create, all right, here we are right there. So I'm gonna make sure that our inputs are selected, the ones that we want to use to print. In this case, I'm gonna use input seven and eight. <clears throat> and then after that, it's just a matter of patching it in. So we have our sum out of the D box right here. I'm gonna do right channel into the channel eight of the 96, left channel into the channel seven of the 96. So, as with any other recording, wanna mute and record enable. Okay, and we can see the signal already showing here in this channel. So let me make that a bit larger, whoops, for us to see. All right, and uh, let's record a little bit of uh, this summed song. So we'll go from the beginning here. <laughs> I 
see is you, visions in my head Growing stronger, each and every day They say that love is blind, well I'm gonna prove them wrong They need to listen to the message in my soul So there you have it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, and obviously everyone's welcome to experiment and kind of find what works for them. Different music has different needs uh, sonically. So um, it's all about what whatever it is that you're looking for. But the fact of the matter is that the D-Box is a very flexible unit. Summing is super clean. Conversion is super clean. And uh, it's just all around a very utilitarian unit you know so we we really like it here in the deep and the deep box in the fish tank we think it's very competitive and it's a great alternative to have you know to buying a fifteen thousand dollar or twenty thousand dollar mixer if it's just you at home you know to still get some clean summing so there you have it those are some tips and tricks with the dangerous d box uh make sure you check us out at littlefishaudio.com subscribe to our youtube channel let us know what other kind of things you want to see other shootouts demos check out our other videos and like us on Facebook. So littlefishaudio.com.